words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Won't you please turn with me to the New Testament book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 3 and 4 of 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 3 and 4. And uh, we are in our uh, series of overcoming worry, grief, and depression. Overcoming worry, grief, and depression. We are in our series. Last week we talked about uh, what will you say in a crisis. And the book of Job had everything to do with not what you do in a crisis, but what you will say in a crisis. And uh, we're going to continue on in our series of overcoming worry, grief, and depression. I want to pause and thank God for Sister Ridley, amen, who's here. Amen. God bless you. Let's give God some thanks and praise for her. Amen. And it's good to see her in the house. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And when you have it, say amen. It says there, join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Man, praise the Lord. We want to uh, preach just a little while from the subject, be a good soldier. Be a good soldier. I want to thank those who are joining us online. We're so grateful for them. I want to ask you if you would please, if you think it's not robbery, to take out your cell phone and check in this morning and let them know and say, I am a good soldier. I am. Amen. I am a good soldier. Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4 in the day. I'm going to preach from the subject, I am or be a good soldier. Uh, I already recognize the veterans, and so as I go along in this sermon, this sermon is going to use the backdrop of the survival manual, FM 21-76. Uh, so uh, FM 21-76, so please don't come looking for me after church, amen. Uh, we're going to use this as our backdrop today. Uh, my dear friends, many of you may not know uh, or remember, but a few years back, there were two young men who were shipwrecked and they were lost at sea. And they were lost at sea with no food to eat or no fresh water to drink. And uh, the interviewer at that time asked them, um, how did you survive when you had no food to eat, no fresh water to drink? How did you make it? And one of the young men said that in my mind, I told my body I needed to live. Now watch this, they're stuck in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. They have no sign that help is coming. They are in a place where it seems desolate as if nothing good is going to come out of it. But in spite of the things that were going on around him, he made up in his mind that he said, I told my mind to tell my body I will survive. My dear friends, uh, I want to tell you today that this is, in no uncertain terms, called willpower. And willpower is when I convince myself to do something that myself thinks it can do. So in other words, you got to have the willpower that I'm going to stay in this no matter what. I'm going to have the willpower that my coworkers will not break me. I'm going to have the willpower that I can that I can graduate from high school. I got to have the willpower that I will survive in spite of the things that's going on around me. I got to have the willpower that I will beat cancer. I've got to have the willpower that this depression won't get the best of me. You got to learn how to send signals from your mind to your spirit that says no matter what's going on around me, I will survive through this storm. And I know this isn't for everybody in here to this morning, but I'm preaching to somebody here this morning who survived some tumultuous circumstance. And if people saw the indicators of what took 
place in your life. They would tell you to roll over, play dead, and to go the opposite direction. But even when there was a piece of you that wanted to give up, you talked yourself out of suicide, talked yourself out of depression, talked yourself out of laying and playing for dead. There's somebody in here who can say straight up, Pastor Kevin, I wasn't stuck in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but I was stuck in the middle of a bad marriage, stuck in the, in the middle of a crazy relationship, stuck in the middle of some crazy Negro, stuck in the middle of a dead end job. But I made up my mind that I'm going to tell my spirit that I will survive through this storm. And I want to know, do I have any survivors in the house today who can say, Pastor Kevin, it ain't been easy. I've been through some stuff that you would not believe. But I'm so glad that it did not break me down. But I made up in my mind, I'm going to have the strength to persevere in spite of what's going on around me. You've got to understand on this Veterans Day that the Army teaches us that the first thing you have to do when you find yourself in a bad circumstance is you got to assess and learn about the environment that you're trapped in. That's FM 21-76. When you're stranded, you got to learn about the environment that you're trapped in. When you're trapped in something, do not have an anxiety attack until you have assessed what you're trapped in. When you know there's a promise over your life and what you're in does not match your promise, then you've got to bring the, the environment under subjection. Uh, you've got to say, okay, God, I just figured it out. You got me facing this demonic supervisor so that when the real job comes, I'll know how to appreciate it. Okay, God, I just figured it out. You got me driving this broke down car so that when the real car comes, I can, I can know how to appreciate it. Okay, God, I know exactly what you're doing. You got me dating this person so that when the real one comes, I'll know how to handle it. But when you're in a bad situation, you got to learn how to operate under spiritual authority and understand, okay, this is just transition. God, if I can make it out of this, I know that sooner or later you're going to give me something greater than where I am now. And you got to ask yourself, is, does this job match the anointing that's over my life? Does my bank account match the anointing that's over my life? Does my house match God's call on my life? And if it doesn't match it, then you know God got something better for you. Don't get caught up in where you are right now. You got to assess your environment and say sooner or later things are getting ready to change. You've got to understand that the army in section 1.7 of FM 21-76 says your emotional state is pivotal to your environmental circumstance. The Grecian philosophers, the, the Egyptian philosophers who had their philosophy stolen by the Grecian philosophers say, I think, therefore I am. Uh, if in fact uh, you, how you think in a bad situation determines how you will survive that situation. Let me say that again. How you think in a bad situation will determine how you will survive that situation. It is in fact a no certain uncertain terms mind over matter. If you allow the matter to control your mind, then you have surrendered your subconscious thoughts. But when you're able to think through a process and still keep your sanity, you know I'm anointed. I don't know who I'm preaching to now, but your environment has been dictated to you that things are not going to get better. And even if you write it down, you don't even know how you got in it. But somewhere along the way, there was a mind transfer that said, let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Okay? But man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks at the heart. Can I 
Hallelujah. But you've got to understand now that the body responds, the body responds to messages from the mind. You've got to learn how to control your mind. But when you study physiology, they in fact have a term called psychosomatic. That the body responds to what the mind thinks. Your body is reacting to what it is you're thinking. With your same self sitting up in church talking about I don't feel well. Have you have you lost your mind? Don't you know that the power of life and death lies in the tongue? Well, you got to understand that you got to speak those things that are not as though they already are. When it is you come to church and your body is wrecked with pain. When you come to church, you got a headache. You don't know. Or where it came from when you come to church and your fingers and your hands are hurting, that is not the time for you to stay home. No, that's the time for you to come to church because the devil thought that you was going to blow balloons for a pity party. He thought you was going to stay home and pack luggage for a guilt trip. But just because you showed up today, watch this, you threw the devil off. Oh my God, because he didn't think you was going to push through what in here today. We're going to say, Pastor Kevin, there was some times I came to church, I had a headache and things were not feeling well, but I began to give God the praise. I began to worship Him. And whatever it is I was going through, I felt so much better when I left the sanctuary. I want you to understand it's not about how you feel, but it's about what you know. That when you come up in here, you may not
decide and, and you make up your mind how you're going to pay them bills before you make up in your mind how you're going to help your son before you make up in your mind how things are going to get better in your household and in your job. Watch what the army says. It says before you devise a plan, make up in your mind that help is on the way. Stuff out. Y'all ain't helping me preach it here today. 
sing a song. He said, we are soldiers in the army. We got to fight. Although we got to die. We got to hold up the bloodstained banner. We got to hold it up until we die. She used to sing a song that said, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I promised him that I will serve him till I die. Listen, be a good soldier. Be a good soldier. There was another one in the sanctuary.